You know? The, is this where it hugged me? There is a report. Yeah. Okay, I guess we can do that. It's doing commission. I guess we can do it. It was doing it too. That's fine. We can yeah. do that. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Next item we have is citizens' input for items on the agenda not requiring a public hearing. We've okay. We've got several individuals signed up to speak. First, we have Miss Gloria Fair. Ms. Fair, if you can come forward. And after Ms. Fair, if you can line up on this wall here, Ms. Helen Bradley and Ms. Tom Mankey. Oh, Ms. Fair, you can come forward, ma'am. Um, Ms. Fair, if you could state your name and address for the record, and you have two minutes, up to two minutes to speak. Um, my name is Gloria Fair. My address is 2136 Congaree Road in Hopkins, or oh, East Over. Um, just wanted to say, I don't want to sound like a broken record here, but it's the same thing. I haven't changed on it. We don't need the sewer. We don't want the sewer. We don't want the water or nothing else. They're inputting none to us. We don't need it because we, if we had wanted it, we probably would have went to the city to get all of that stuff. We don't need that because we are having very, well, at least I am. I'm very pleased with what my separate tank does for me and my water does for me. Living on a fixed income, I don't need no other bills. Single parent, don't need it. Same thing, so over and over and over, and I'll say it until. We don't need it down there, and we don't want it. If y'all want to bring it, bring it at y'all expense, and not ours. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Fair. Ms. Bradley. Ellen Taylor Bradley, 1916 Martin Luther King Boulevard, Hopkins, South Carolina. I'm coming with a FOI request, um, and I'd like to read it into the record. Uh, Hopkins and Lawrence and Citizens United, P.O. Box 429, Hopkins, South Carolina. And this, I'm giving this request to Mr. McDonnell. Dear Mr. McDonnell, pursuant to the South Carolina Freedom of Information Act, I am requesting the following information. The number of times and date over the last 10 years that Richland County has been cited by DHEC or any other regulatory entity for violations at any of the Richland County wastewater treatment facilities to include any cons consent orders. Number two, the amount of fines and dates over the last 10 years for wastewater treatment and or water violations by regulatory entities against Richland County. Number three, the number of sanctions, fines, or consent orders against Richland County for the lagoon operated by the county at Franklin Park subdivision in Hopkins, South Carolina. Thanking you in advance for your cooperation. Sincerely, Helen Taylor Bradley, spokesperson, Hopkins and Lawrence and Citizens United. And uh, just for the record, Mr. Smith, uh, for four year requests, is there process we're doing it. You can give it to give, our clerk. Give it to Mr. McDonald and we'll make sure it's routed through the appropriate. Okay, because, all right. Thank you, Mr. Mankey. And after Mr. Mankey, we have Lottie Wesley and Rosa Davis. Tom, <clears throat> excuse me, Tom Mankey, 320 Clearview Drive in Hopkins. I'm responding. I was not able to be here a couple of sessions back. Uh, a citizen came and made a request that folks living in rural areas should uh, sacrifice for future generations and bring about urbanization. And I would like, you know, I appreciate other people's opinions, I really do, but I do not always agree with them. And I would like to put an argument in, if I may, for the rural environment. And uh, right now, we are, I think the, the request was to make this urbanization come about for something called the future. And I've been around a while, and I've heard people wanting to bring about what I think of as harmful acts in the name of the future or in the name of something called progress or even in the name of things called like God and country. 
but I still see them as harmful acts. We are living uh, in someone else's future right now. Folks have designed the future that we're living in. It's a very urbanized world today. Uh, a, an anthropologist named Dr. Lauren Isley a number of years ago made a very profound observation. He said, never before have such large masses of people been so totally divorced from the land or from the direct processing of their own food stuff. And some people would look at that and they'd say, that's, that's progress. That's great. But I see a very, a very harmful uh, event here being brought about by the, the synthetic world of the city. Folks living in the urban areas start believing uh, that power comes from a switch on the wall, water from a spigot, and food from the refrigerator, or they might stretch as far as the grocery store. They're separated from the sources. There are all these intermediate steps between them and the source that they provides them their needs. And people only care about those things that they know. Is that a that that's, alarm for that me? That was the alarm, yes, sir. That's Thank two you. minutes already? Yes, sir. Yeah. Oh, I have the heart of this I thing. Can I have a personal uh, <laughs> request allowing me just a couple Thank of more you. comments? No, no, sir. We do it. From no council member? Nope. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Mackey. Next we have Lottie Wesley. Good evening. I'm Lottie Wesley. I live at 164 Sumter Loop, Hopkins, South Carolina, 29061. A couple of weeks ago in the newspaper, there was an article, and some of our council members had answered back to it. And they were saying that they wanted things to be transparent where everybody can understand it and it be clear. Okay, transparent is easily understood or detected. But in that statement in the newspaper, it was mentioned that they wanted it to be transparent. But guess what? When the vote came up to ask, to say who vote on what and how you voted, they were one of the ones to vote against it. How transparent can that be? Okay, the county council, the county stopped treating the sewer system over at Hopkins Elementary, Hopkins Middle, and Gaston Elementary. I guess that was a little catch so that, you know, when they come up with the sewer thing, they have something to fight back and say, well, it's not working. I live less than a mile from Hopkins Middle School. In all the years I've lived there, the little machine was working up and down. The little suzzy stuff was going on because it was being treated. Maybe about the last year and a half, it hadn't. So what y'all have seen on the news this week, that's because it hadn't been working because they said not to have it working. So when you go out there to make it work, when you stir up something, you're going to get all that stuff at the top. So, you know, just in case you didn't know. So just in case for these people that don't live in the country and don't know what the country does, if you have a river, and the storm comes up and that river rises. Everything from the river goes to the outer edges into the woods. There are deep holes out in the woods. When the water level goes back, those holes still have water in it. Guess what happened to the water in it? It get contaminated because there's nothing there to make it breathe, nothing there to keep it going. When the water rises again, it pulls that same contaminated water back to the river. We are not the ones with our little separate tanks causing all the problem. It's when that 500 to 1,000 to 500,000 gallons come from the sewer in Colombia. Evidently, we don't know the country. Thank you, Ms. Wesley. Rosa Davis. And then Jennifer Mankey. Hello, Rosa Davis. I'm at 110. Martin Carter Road in Hopkins, and that's in front of the Hopkins Post Office. I'm one of the citizens that did receive the survey, and I immediately sent it back in with no sewer written across it. I'm the head of my household, and right now, when I'm, I'm finding difficulty paying the bills that I have. A separate tank is working fine, and I just want to say um, I just don't want the sewer project in, my, in the area. I just, just can't afford it. No more bills. I don't need another bill. And that's just my, don't need the two minutes just to say that, but that's what I have to say. Yes, 
Jennifer Mackey. My name is Jennifer Mankey. I live at 320 Clearview Drive, Hopkins, South Carolina. Two sessions ago, I couldn't speak because I was going to cry. I didn't want to cry in public. Last time, I think I spoke and I was a little negative about uh, what I thought our chances were for saving our rural, uniquely rural environment. Today, I want to just say, that next week I'm taking a class, a teacher class, from the Department of Agriculture, and I had to fill out a form that said, why did you want to take this class? And I thought about it. I'm a transplant from Minnesota. My family is a farming family. My grandfather had 169 acres of self-sufficient farm. He was very proud of being self-sufficient, so proud of it that he bought a car during the Depression so he could show that he could. I think that, the, that you're trying to take away a self-sufficiency of the people that live in the country. They don't want, they don't, they're not against government. They're not always against change, although change is always hard for everybody. But they want to retain the self-sufficiency that they have, the self-sufficiency that works, the biological structure of a septic tank that works very well, they want to retain their independence, not that they're totally against government, not that they're always against change, although change is always hard. They want to stay independent and be able to take care of themselves, like my grandfather who could buy a car during the Depression because he was self-sufficient. Thank you. Thank you. Is it Aura Bell Green? And Deletta Lindsay. My name is Aurabelle Green. I live in Hopkins, got 154 Serenia Road in Hopkins. I'm not for the sewage. Uh, my separate tank is working fine. I was there ever since I was there all of my life, 80 some years. Had no trouble with my separate tank, no, with my pump. I don't have no, separate, no trouble with it. If you have to do the schools, go on and do the school and let's leave the poor people alone and, and we'll be okay. And what goes around will come around. Thank you, Ms. Thank you, Ms. Green. Uh, Deletta Lindsay. Don Zetta. Good evening. My name is Don Zetta Lindsay. I reside at 1700 Clarkson Road in Hopkins, South Carolina. Um, just a reminder Sorry. that Hopkins was land granted to John Hopkins back in the 1800s. Okay, the people that are living now in Hopkins, the majority of people who've been there all their life are descendants of John Hopkins and also slaves. Just to remind you, that's how proud we are. In April County Council meeting, I stated that I did not receive a survey and I was told that the sewer system would not affect me and that's why I didn't get a survey. In May County Council meeting, I requested a letter from the county stating that I would not be affected as told by the county council employee. As of today, I have not received a survey, a letter, or a phone call. Last night, I don't know how many of you saw Channel 25, my driveway was shown on 25, Channel 25 News concerning the sewer system in Lower Richland. Once again, this is June meeting, I'm requesting a letter from the county council stating that I will not be affected by the sewer system as stated by the employee. Thank you. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Next we'll have the report of the county administrator, Mr. McDonald. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of council. Just a couple of items for me. Uh, first up, just want to give you um, a preview of what's coming up uh, a week from this coming Saturday on June the 13th, the Upgrade Together Conference, which the county is sponsoring. And I'm going to ask Community Development Director Valeria Jackson 
as well as uh, Planning Director Tracy Hegler to give you just a very brief preview of what you might expect on the 13th. Thank you. Good evening, Council. How are you? Hi. Um, we have a brief video. It's a commercial. Love for you to watch this, and then we will wrap up very quickly. It's easy to do you, but over time, oh, it could be you plus two. You may need a house with space. You're just you, and for the most part, it's easy to do you. But over time, it could be you plus two. You may need a house with space for you and your spouse. And over time, there may be children running about. <laughs> that can cause a bit of stress, but with the right homeowner skills, you can save on bills, like your mortgage and your power. They get more costly by the hour. And what about the neighbors? There are those whose yards are oh so neat, and others whose yards they always mistreat. We can give you tips to make your community better. So please come out for Upgrade Together. The event is free and includes breakfast and lunch because learning is better when there is something to munch. Just make sure you register and come be attentive. We'll even have prizes as another incentive. That PIO, let's thank them for that. Um, Who, whose voice was that? <laughs> little susical, I understand, but we were trying to make it fun and jaunty. Uh, but again, I'm standing here with Valeria Jackson. We are hosting, for the first time, a joint conference between community development and the planning department. Wanted to merge housing and neighborhood improvement issues together. It will be next Saturday, as Mr. McDonald mentioned, 8 to 2 at Richland Northeast High School. Again, it's free to our citizens. We're hosting four sessions. Uh, one that will touch on um, housing needs in the area and how some local experts are trying to address those needs. Um, we're also going to give tips on how to reduce mortgage and some of your energy bills and even how to make your homes more energy efficient. Um, the third session will include um, staff from the planning and zoning department to help folks understand what the comprehensive plan update means to them and some zoning and um, code regulation issues that we constant, you know, that we hear a lot about and can maybe help citizens with. And lastly, the conference will end with a collaborative town hall where Chairman Rush and several county departments will talk about how we're working together to really make Richland County a better place for our citizens. Um, hopefully we'll invite some questions and have a lot of really good dialogue back and forth with the citizens and the attendees that come. So everybody received a shirt, I believe, at their seat. Hope you'll wear it every day between now and then to help us promote the event. Um, definitely want to get um, a lot of attendance. We're excited about it. Um, and then I would ask Ms. Jackson if she has anything else she'd like to say. Thank you, Ms. Hagler. No, um, we've done a really hard job, and I, when I say we, I mean staff, and their staff from planning as well as community development, they've worked really hard on this, so we really hope that you join us, and um, let's upgrade together. Thank you. Any questions Thank you. for us? No. Great. Thanks, Thank Mr. You. McDonald's. Thanks. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> my next and last item is just a brief update on the budget. Of course, we've given uh, a portion of second reading to the budget uh, Thursday of last week. We have the second second reading uh, coming up later this week on Thursday at 6 p.m. That will be for those items that did not get completed last week, as well as the majority of the general fund items uh, that were not up for a vote last week. So again, that is Thursday at 6 p.m. You uh, should have received already an updated motions list. That includes all the actions that have been taken up through uh, Thursday's meeting of last week. And that completes my report, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. McDonald. Next, we have the report of the Clerk of Council. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of council. I wanted to take the opportunity. I sent you all an email yesterday, but I wanted to introduce our new member to the clerk's office, Ms. Kimberly Roberts, if I can get her to stand up. We are excited about having her. Ms. Roberts brings a wealth of uh, knowledge and professionalism to the clerk's office, and we're excited about that. She has an undergraduate in English and public relations, a double master's in business and human resources, and so we're excited that she's here. Thank you. I also wanted to introduce Mr. 
uh, <laughs> Mr. Johnson. Mr. Johnson is a senior at AC Floor. Uh, he reached out to us because he wanted to get some government experience and kind of learn the inner workings. And so I asked if he wanted to come on and volunteer with us for a few weeks throughout the summer. So he'll, you'll see him periodically around. We uh, made him sweat a little bit today, so hopefully he'll come back tomorrow. But I want to introduce you to Mr. Johnson. <laughs> does he have a driver's license? He does have a driver's license. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chairman, is that the same Flora High School I've been reading about in the newspaper about every day? That one. <laughs> <laughs> I got you as the chauffeur. Uh, and my next item is we received an invitation from the Community Relations Council for their annual luncheon, um, and they asked for council support again this year for their luncheon. They asked for the level 1500 um, If council would be interested, uh, we could buy individual tickets, which will cost us a few dollars less if you all would like to do that option for those members that would like to attend, which are $40 per ticket, which if every council member went with the guests, that'll bring us down to $800. Um, and so just wanted to get council's feeling on how you would like to move forward. Mr. Chair. Ms. Dixon. Uh, Ms. McDonald. Ms. McDaniels, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> isn't that one of the organizations that react? You want to take the heat for it, Mr. McDonald? You don't. No, <laughs> uh, is that one of the organizations that we currently fund now on an annual basis? Yes, ma'am, we do. And we're, they're asking us to buy a table at $1,500? Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Dixon. Any more discussion? <clears throat> we don't have to vote on that, do we? If I could get action from council, that'd be great. I don't think we've got a motion for that. I, Mr. Chairman, I suggest for those council members that have funds in their discretionary account, they can contact the clerk's office and go through the procedures. I think we'll take that direction. Well, that concludes my report, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. I think, Mr. Jeter, can you? Yeah, I just basically said for, for, for those of us that have uh, funds in your discretionary account, um, just contact the clerk's office, and if you want to attend, follow those procedures. Uh, individual tickets. Mm -hmm. yeah. All, right. All right, thank you. <clears throat> Ms. McDaniels. All right, thank you. Next we have a report of the chair. I don't have any report at this time. Next item we'll have open and close of public hearing. Uh, 6A is authorizing an amendment to the master agreement governing the I-77 corridor regional industrial park jointly developed with Fairfield County to increase the percentage of the revenues generated by the properties located in Richland County to be deposited in the Richland County Industrial Park Fund from 3% to 5% and other related matters. Mr. That public hearing is open. We don't have a sign up sheet. No, we don't have that. On either of the public hearings. Sorry. <laughs> Okay. That public hearing is open. There's no one signed up. Okay. There's no one signed up to speak. That public hearing is now closed. Item 6B, an ordinance amending the fiscal year 2014-2015 hospitality tax fund annual budget to appropriate $2,025,000 of hospitality fund balance to provide funding for purchasing property associated with Project LM as recommended by the Economic Development Committee. No one that public hearing is open. No one signed up to speak. That public hearing is now closed. Next, we have approval of consent items. We have items 7 through 13. Here. Second. I've got a motion for approval of consent items. It's been properly seconded. Any discussion? All in favor signify with raising your hand. In favor of Dixon, Malinowski, Pierce, Rush, Livingston, Jeter. Any opposed? Oppose Rose. All right. It's an item. Mr. Carries. What? Yeah. Mr. Malinowski. I'd like to ask for reconsideration of all those consent items. 
His second. His second. Wait, wait. Uh, is there anyone in particular so we can move on with the airport stuff and all these other funding? Or, or do we? For which one? Well, well these just second readings. Well, some of them. The airport. Uh, one more reading. Yeah, one more. <clears throat> it doesn't because uh, it doesn't say after it. Say it. So that's why I was going to get reconsideration. I thought that was just one reading because it doesn't say after it. Second. Can we reading. consider one? Just Did you want uh, anyone? Thirteen. Okay. I like reconsideration for item number. Uh, seven 12. and 12. number 12 and number 13 because those do not second two, those two okay. seven, 12, I and got 13. a motion for reconsideration uh, it's been properly second mr. J just for clarification I voted against that motion um, and will vote against the reconsideration uh, because I'm against item number seven just for the record point of order mr. chairman on a, on a motion to reconsider Yes, sir. It, it has to be each individual. You can't do. Okay. Well, 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 yeah. Oh, individually. Yeah. There yes. need to be an individual motion for each item to be. Okay. Well, we stand corrected. You want item I'll number seven? I'll do one at a time. Move for reconsideration. Item number seven. Second. Right. Got a motion for reconsideration. It's been properly second. Discussion, Mr. Jeter. It's just a question. Is is this item tied to our budget that we're discussing? on Thursday. Thursday is so Mr. I'm just curious given third reading and approval how does that affect the budget or the item in the budget because the I'll tell you why I'm asking why you think right. about the answer is because we've had several uh, hospitality projects right. that council mm -hmm. has either given first second and third reading on and I'm, I'm trying to figure out what the funding plan is for those items. And these are the, I call them the big ticket items. Right. Um, because although we're given third reading, and we've given first, second, and third reading on other items, we still don't know how we're going to fund these projects. So we're identifying the amount of money, <clears throat> but we still hadn't seen a funding plan. So I can't support the So if you can answer the first part of my question, uh, how, did, how is this? Uh, affect the item that's in the budget. Sure. Do, do, do you want to? No. Uh, Mr. Yeah. McDonough? Yeah, uh, Mr. Jeter, uh, you are correct. This this does have an impact on the budget. Uh, this without. Um, this is one of the uh, four destination plans or destination parks that have been discussed by the council uh, for which there is a funding plan for those four as has been presented uh, recently to I believe the hospitality tax ad hoc committee uh, as and then referred on to a subsequent subsequent full council meeting uh, so that there are funds accounted for for this project now if things change and if any of those other projects change or any of the remainder of the hospitality tax budget changes then <coughs> that could influence what may eventually become of this project and, and, and I appreciate that the reason the reason I ask is because you know we spent quite a quite a bit of funds on you you've identified four projects and I've yet to been given the funding mechanism for all four. And I'm not too sure we got the money for all four, but I guess I'll have to wait and see until all those funding plans come before us. Sure. But all right. if, if they approve this and, and they reconsider, they appropriate the dollars. So I'm sure y'all will be bringing those funding plans for those projects. All right. Uh, thank you, Mr. Cheater. You done? I'm done. All right. Mr. Malinowski. Hey, Mr. Right. I just wanted to say the only reason I asked for the reconsideration is told by our finance director, uh, Mr. Driggers, the funds have been allocated, and because there is a contract in place with a deadline coming up, that was. Uh, Chad had mentioned, Mr. The, Chad mentioned that uh, the 16th of this month. 16th was coming up, and he asked if we'd reconsider that so he could get all the paperwork prepared with the legal section. That was why. 
Ms. Dickerson. Thank you, Mr. Mellon. Uh, Mr. Chair um, and the members of council, I don't know whether I can support a third reading on this particular item tonight. Uh, and then, as Ms. Jeter has uh, indicated, this is a budget item, and until we know where all of the money is going to be spent, I don't think we need to tie up our dollars Mr. until Mr. we until we can Mr. have Mr. a clear choice as to where these well, dollars are going to be program. allocated. Yeah, uh, so, therefore, I can't support it. Well, Mr. Well, well, Mr. Chair, I'll withdraw my motion for reconsideration. Thank you. Well, Let understand. It, no, it, we just I know it's approved it in. <coughs> I understand we okay. just approved right. it for third reading. Okay. So but we before we on. actually do it for before reconsideration, it. I think we need to make sure that we get this clear on at our next um, budget hearing. Well, we're, sure. Okay, we'll have to do it before you approve the minutes on it's the fixed. next. Yeah, yeah before yeah. we okay. do approve that's what okay. I'm saying. Okay, I'm Thank just you. making clear, clarifying where we are. Because we are, because based on the approval of the consent items, we approved this third reading. Yeah, and we, we have to catch it before the minutes right. in the next week. All right, Ms. He drew his motion, so. He did. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, Mr. Pierce, you just yeah, want a discussion. And I hate to be the devil's advocate here, but mm -hmm. I, I think this discussion that Mr. Jeter started is absolutely correct. And, and it produces a bit of a conundrum that if, if this is approved on third reading and then the funding plan approved by the budget is inconsistent <coughs> with that, it's going to produce a conflict. Um, so yeah. this would this would postpone final reading of this uh, would would be after the budget. That's cool. uh, Mr. Peer, Mr. Chairman, if I may. Um, this yeah. Would now go to I, the. Yeah, I think you. I think you. I think you gave it third reading. You just didn't clinch it, so you could reconsider. So it's not going to be until the minutes are approved. It's That's not correct. going to be. That's. And that will be after third reading of the budget. Right. Okay. Yeah. So yes. we will have an opportunity to correct the conundrum. Yeah. That is correct. Okay. Yeah, we will. All right. All right. But there was. No, I'm through. No, through. Right. No, 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 no. We don't need to take all the. <laughs> 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 I was only one at a time, and I'm. Yeah. I'm all right. Thank you, Mr. Malinowski. I'm done. It's going uh, out all night here. What, the two others? Yeah, he he withdrew all of them. So we'll just clinch it during the minutes. Uh, third reading item. Item 14, 14-38 uh, MA, uh, George Golf, HI to GC, 15.39 acres, 11.17 and 11.05 Sparkleberry Lane Extension. Um, Chair, entertain the motion. Mr. Chair. Ms. Dixon. Um, at this time, I'll, due to the request of the applicant of withdrawal, I'd like to go ahead and withdraw this item from our agenda. Chair, you. <laughs> okay, I've got a motion for withdrawal. It's been properly seconded. Any discussion? All in favor of that motion, signify by raising your hand. In favor, Dixon, Malinowski, Rose, Pierce, Rush, Livingston, Dickerson, Jeter. Any opposed? <coughs> that motion carries. <laughs> Item 15. An ordinance amending the Richland County Code of Ordinance, Chapter 26, Land Development, so as to remain in compliance with the National Flood Insurance Program upon the adoption of the new flood insurance rate map. Mr. Chairman. Chair, uh, Mr. McDonald. Yeah, uh, we would ask that you defer this, Mr. Chairman. We are still waiting to get feedback from FEMA before it goes forward for the next reading. Make a motion to defer. Second. I got a motion for a deferral. It's been properly seconded. Uh, deferral is non debatable. Uh, all in favor signify by raising your hand. In favor, Dixon, Malinowski, Rose, Pierce, Rush, Livingston, Dickerson, Jeter. All right. Item 16, authorizing the expansion of boundaries of I 77 Corridor Regional Industrial Park jointly developed with Fairfield County to include certain real property located in Richland County. <laughs> The execution and delivery of a credit agreement to provide for special source credit, special source revenue credits to Icon Columbia, South Carolina, LLC, previously identified as Project Sandy and other related matters. Chair, entertain a motion. Yeah, approval. I second. got a motion for approval. It's been properly second. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by raising your hand. 
in favor, Dixon, Malinowski, Rose, Pierce, Rush, Livingston, Dickerson, Jeter. Any opposed? Like sign? That motion carries. <laughs> item 17. I like a motion for reconsideration for item 16. Okay, I got a motion for reconsideration of mm -hmm. item 16. It, it, it's been properly second. Mm -hmm. Any discussion? All in favor of that motion, raise your hand. In favor, Rose. Uh, any opposed? Like sign. Opposed, Dixon, Malinowski, Pierce, Rush, Livingston, Dickerson, Jeter. All right, items, that motion carries. Um, well, uh, the, recon the reconsideration fails, I'm sorry. Um, item 17. I think that's item we discussed in the Economic Development Committee to defer. defer that item. Uh, yep, that's correct. So, so I got a motion for deferral. Second. It's been properly second. All in uh, first, non-debatable. All in favor of deferral, raise your hand. In favor, Dixon, Malinowski, Rose, Pierce, Rush, Livingston, Dickerson, Jeter. <coughs> Any opposed? That motion carries. Second reading item. And I, uh, an ordinance authorizing a ground lease between Richland County and Richland County School District 2 on behalf of Rich, Richland County Public Library so as to allow for the automatic transfer of title to library building to Richland County School District 2 at the end of the lease term. Chair, entertain a motion. Motion for deferral. Second. I've got a motion for deferral. It's been properly second. Deferral is non-debatable. All in favor of deferrals, uh, signify by raising your hand. In favor, Dixon, Malinowski, Rush. Uh, all opposed? Opposed, Rose, Pierce, Livingston, Dickerson, Manning, Jeter. Okay, that motion failed. Chair, entertain another motion. Mr. Chairman, I move for approval. We've got a motion yeah, for approval. Second. It's been properly second. All right, discussion. Mr. Malinowski. Mr. Chair, the only reason that I was voting for a deferral on that is that I have not seen this uh, this latest copy of a lease. I spoke with the, the attorney, Mr. Smith. He said he got it uh, somewhere shortly afternoon today. I guess he forwarded that out. I was already gone before noon, so I have no idea what I would be voting on here, especially after having questions on the previous lease just prior to this. So that's why I wasn't uh, supporting it right now. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Malinowski. Ms. Dixon. Ms. Dickerson or Dixon? You, yeah. Yeah, Ms. Dixon and Dickerson. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, I want to make it for the record. The reason I'm denying this, actually, I would like to defer, there's still some part of the lease that I do have some concern about that has not been addressed as yet, so that is my ground for deferral or denial for tonight. All right, thank you, Ms. Dickerson. I mean, Ms. Dixon, sorry. Ms. Uh, Ms. Dixon. I'm sorry. Dickerson. Ms. Dickerson. Okay, Dickerson. Uh, Ms. Ms. Uh, this, my question is for the attorney. Uh, is it my understanding that this leads to sign this over, so this is to extend it out for the 50 years? Is this correct? The, the, I'm sorry, I didn't understand your question. Is this, the, is this the extension, taking it out to the first 25, 50 years? That was my understanding of this particular part of signing this over? 25, 50 years. No, the, the, the transfer of the property transfer. itself, the transfer of the property itself mm -hmm. comes at the expiration of the lease term. So once the lease expires, uh, the, the property itself will be transferred over to but the district. But that is at the end of the 50 years, is that correct? That, that's correct. That's all that, I'm asking. Okay, yeah. 50 okay. years, okay. that's what I'm Right, yeah. Lease yeah. transferred for 50 years. It, right, Thank yeah. you. That's correct. Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Ms. Uh, Ms. Dickerson, Mr. Livingston. I got you, Mr. Uh, there was a meeting one day last week referenced this item, and myself and other council members attended that meeting. In that meeting, I think there were only like no more than one or two items that were still left for some some debate. And in my opinion, I didn't think they were very serious. Again, that's my opinion. And keep in mind, the reason why we have three readings is so we have an opportunity to look at something to make some changes. This is the second reading item. Mm -hmm. It's very important that we're going to move this, prop, this, this, this project forward. 
we need to go ahead on and, and, and take action. It's, it's already in the works and so forth. It, uh, delaying it won't help. If you have objections, you can still vote on third reading and, and say whatever you need to say. But I, I don't think it's a good idea to just simply delay the project on second reading. Otherwise, there's no need in having three readings. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, Mr. Livingston. Mr. Manning. Mr. Attorney, um, in follow-up to Councilman Livingston in the meeting last week, the items that were brought up and addressed there, have they been addressed here? Uh, yes. And Thank that you. was a part of okay, Mr. Chairman, what I'm, I forwarded I'm, I'm complete. to Council. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Manning. Any more discussion on this item? All in favor, the motion was for approval of this item. All in favor of the motion, signify by raising your hand. Rose, Pierce, Rush, Livingston, Dickerson, Manning, Jeter. All opposed? Opposed, Dixon, Malinowski. All right, that motion carries. <coughs> Next item we have. Uh, item 1915-23MA, JR, JR Lex 2 LLC, R2, RU to RC, 2.61 acres, 7743 Bluff Road. Chair, entertain a motion. Approved, Mr. Chair. Got a motion for approval. Is, uh, is there a second? Okay. A dot. Oh, okay. Second. Uh, it's been properly second. Mm -hmm. Any discussion? All in favor of the motion, signify by raising your hand. In favor, Dixon, Malinowski, Rose, Pierce, Rush, Livingston, Dickerson, Jeter. Any opposed? That motion carries. <clears throat> Next we'll have the report of the Economic Development Committee, Mr. Livingston. Mr. Chair, I'm item 20A. A resolution adopting an amendment of, of the covenants and restrictions for the Northeast Industrial Park to remove certain restrictions and approximately a quarter of an acre of, of land there. As you may recall, last year we removed the restricted covenants for a section of the park uh, that's located off of Clemson Road. Um, in this case, FEM Manufacturing has requested a small parcel, 0.25 acres, um, fronting on the Two Notch Road to, to, to be removed from the covenants. Uh, the committee recommendation is for approval. All right, the committee recommendations for approval discussion. Mr. Malinowski. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I mean, I'm sure I could support this. But my problem in reading this is it gives us no information whatsoever as to why we're doing it, other than somebody made a request, but we don't know why the request is there. For the purposes, I think the public should have some. I can idea. do that, but I'll ask Mr. Lindsay to the right. regional development director. It just that. seemed like it should have been in here. Uh, the company's request that they're considering a retail operation on the a portion of their property that fronts Two Notch Road, and the restrictive covenants as written do not allow for retail operations, and so the removal will allow for that use. Okay, thank you. Mr. Malinowski? Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Malinowski. Any more discussion? The committee's recommendation was for approval. All in favor of the committee recommendation uh, signify by raising your hand. In favor, Dixon, Malinowski, Rose, Pierce, Rush, Livingston, Dickerson. Any, oppo okay. Any opposed? I'm on the committee. So no opposed. That motion carries. Mr. Chair, for uh, a little reconsideration of this item. Okay, I got a motion for reconsideration. It's been properly second. Any discussion on that? All in favor of reconsideration, please raise your hand. Any against? Oh, I forgot. No. Opposed, Amen. Dixon, Malinowski, Rose, Pierce, no <laughs> Rush, yeah. Dickerson. All right, that you got it. it was in favor, Livingston Jeter. No, no, right. no for Livingston. I was yep. that um, I was not thinking. <laughs> that that motion fails for reconsideration. Fails. <laughs> All right, Mr. Livingston. That completes the report. Of you can have that Thank you, Mr. Livingston. Next, we have a report of the Rules and Appointments Committee. Mr. Malinowski. Testing. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I have number. 
21A and B, there are vacancies, as you can see, for those two items. The committee recommends to advertise those vacancies. Okay, that's the committee's recommendation. Any discussion? All in favor of the committee's recommendation, signify by raising your hands. In favor. Dixon, Malinowski, Rhodes, Pierce, Rush, Livingston, Dickerson, Jeter. Any opposed? That motion carries. Mr. Malinowski. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Item number 22, board terms. The committee recommends to move forward with making all board terms, committee terms, uh, four years and if that means that we need to enlist the assistance of the county lobbyist then that's what we need to do and the purpose for the four-year terms is so that all boards committees and commissions will have the same length of time and as was mentioned by one of our council members a, uh, a term will not outlive the term of a council member there's a couple of in there that are five and six years. It was Mr. Washington that, that brought that up. So the, what's the recommendation? recommendation is to, to make the, the, take the efforts needed to make all boards, committees, and commissions four-year terms. Okay, and that's for 22A, is that correct? 22A, yes. Okay, you heard the committee's recommendation, discussion, Mr. Livingston, what if there's a um, an agency that we appoint individuals to, as well as other entities, let's say a shared appointment with the City of Columbia and others, and they appoint their person for six years, and we only appoint our person for four years, um, that may give us a little disadvantage in terms of becoming chairmanship and the, having a leadership those, role. Those those committees will have to stay as as they are. <coughs> so, but when so there when there's a dual entity involved, like. Uh, so it wouldn't affect those entities. It won't affect those. Like good, this. Good. Yeah. Just that's what I'm getting at. Good. Just our own. Thanks. Okay. Uh, any more discussion on this item? Miss Miss Dickerson. Say for instance, when do, when are you proposing that this go into effect? How are you going to? How, how would you start this process? Well, the process will be started by. The next appointees by the next appointees, but there there are some there are some of these boards, commissions, and committees that have some state rules that have been passed by the legislature, and so that's where we said we need to have our lobbyists, if need be, make the efforts to get them all back to a four-year term or increase to a four-year term. I understand what you're saying, but I'm just trying to figure out how you're going to arrive at that point. Well, we can't do it until the ordinances are changed. So it would be at that point once we find out what can and can't be done. And if it can't be done, then I guess we'll just continue the way we are well, right now. I guess what I'm trying to say, for instance, if I'm on a board today and I've got maybe oh, two okay. years on it, that's I got what I'm you. saying. If a your current member is serving, upon the expiration of your term, yeah. 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 upon the expiration of your term on the incoming, the new It'd incoming, four years. or your reappointment. Okay, thank Correct. you. That's what I didn't understand. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Dickerson. Okay, you heard the committee's recommendation. Any more discussion? All in favor of that recommendation, signify by raising your hand. In favor, Dixon, Malinowski, Rose, Pierce, Rush, Livingston, Dickerson, Jeter. Any opposed? That motion carries. Item, uh, Mr. Malinowski. Item number 22B, the committee recommends at this point to move forward with Mr. Pierce's motion. Okay, the committee's... Which the, the motion for those that don't have it in front. Uh, the motion is to move that the terms of board members to the Lexington Richland Alcohol Drug Commission, LARADAC, be changed from two three year terms to three three year terms <coughs> so that Richland County appointees have the same opportunities for extended service on this board as Lexington County appointees are currently allowed. All right, that's the board's recommendation. Any discussion? 
All in favor of that recommendation signify by raising your hand. In favor, Dixon, Malinowski, Rose, Pierce, Rush, Livingston, Dickerson, Jeter. Any opposed, signify by raising your hand as well. And that concludes my report, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Malinowski. Other items, report of the sewer ad hoc committee. Um, Mr. Jackson, are you going to do that report? I have the motion, um, but you, you want me to do it? Okay. So Mr. Mr. McDonald, yeah. if, you can, McDonald. if you can do that report. Yeah. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Um, item A and item 1 under A, uh, Mr. Chair, are actually related. Um, the item A is the language <clears throat> in the ordinance that we have been uh, dealing with and, with and that has been before you. Uh, in previous meetings, which uh, the attempt is to not uh, require those who live within 200 feet of an existing sewer line uh, that it be mandatory that they connect. In other words, it, the, the attempt here is to relieve that requirement. Again, so if there is a functioning septic tank or if a septic tank exists that can be uh, the smell functioning and can be repaired again that would take away the requirement to connect to a system or to a an existing municipal system if you're within 200 feet uh, item one I think uh, under a is a motion from mr. Malinowski <clears throat> which I think attempts to do uh, exactly the same thing and I'll let Mr. Malinowski address that if he if he would like but the the revised language in a uh, the third reading item uh, on page 72 and uh, 73 I believe again achieves what has been discussed both by the council uh, as well as the sewer ad hoc committee at a recent meeting what was the recommendation? Uh, again, the recommendation is the language on page 172. Okay. You. And again, what that does is it, it no longer requires uh, a homeowner or a property owner that is within 200 feet of, a, of an existing sewer line to connect to that sewer line as long as their septic tank is in good repair or is repairable. Okay, that's the community's recommendation. I've got a couple signed up. Uh, Mr. Livingston. Yeah. Oh, before I thought that was inserted because of DHEC requirements. I believe there is, and I'll let Mr. Peterson from the Utilities Department address this. He certainly has more uh, intimate knowledge of this than I, 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 I do. If, if DHEC is okay with it, I thought it was DHEC. We, we have had discussions with DHEC, Mr. Livingston, and, and that's a very good point. And DHEC has indicated that they would allow this language and uh, defer to the county in these situations. But again, I'll let okay. Mr. Peterson uh, <coughs> give you more detail. Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Livingston, and members of the council, uh, as, mix, as Mr. McDonald mentioned, uh, I have uh, discussed the uh, proposed language with DHEC and asked for clarification on how DHEC would handle a repair permit for an existing septic system and uh, what they would do if the county were deny, would deny for some reason uh, access to the public sewer system. Uh, DHEC's response essentially was that if the county were to deny, deny access for for any reason or for no reason, then uh, DHEC would go ahead and issue the repair permit for the existing septic tank system, provided the repairs would meet all of their standards, and also provided that the existing soil conditions would be suitable for a septic system. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Livingston. Ms. Diggerson. Uh, Mr. Chair, I am going to make a motion to defer this item because this item is in my colleague's district and I have not heard anything from him on that respect. So on that regards, I'm gonna make a motion to defer this item and let him come and help him explain this, that he has had, a, had the opportunity to discuss it with his community. So I'm motion to defer. I've got a motion for a deferral. It's been properly second. Deferral is non-debatable. Uh, all in favor of deferral, signify by raising your hand. 
In favor, Dixon, Malinowski, Rose, Pierce, Rush, Dickerson, Jeter. All opposed? Oppose, opposed, Livingston. Okay, deferral carries. Um, next item, Mr. McDonald. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, uh, the next item is really just an update uh, for information only, which again came from the sewer ad hoc committee at its last meeting last week. And I'll let Mr. Peterson again give you just a, a very brief update on where the, the project is. Thank you, Mr. McDonald. Uh, based on a report last week from our design engineer for the project, uh, Joel Wood and Associates, the, uh, the project at this point is approximately 85% complete for design. Uh, it's anticipated that they would apply for a construction application for a permit to construct with DHEC uh, sometime probably in late July, early August. Uh, at that, uh, depending on how long it would take DHEC to review the project and issue a construction permit, uh, we're estimating that it would go to bid sometime probably in late September. Uh, after the bids were received and reviewed, it is anticipated at that point that uh, groundbreaking would be sometime around uh, early November. And that construction would complete, be completed in mid-summer next year, 2016. All right. All right. Thank you. Mr. <clears throat> next. Mr. McDonald. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. The last item under the uh, committee's report is item C, which you discussed in executive session. And I believe there may be a motion coming forward on item C. Motion. Uh, Mr. Um, Jackson. It's a motion to affirm. Huh? An Okay, All right, Mr. Jackson. Yes, um, I asked by my colleague, Mr. Washington, to make the motion. A motion to affirm and expand upon um, the motion passed on the March 17, 2015 Council hearing, hereby, thereby confirming that Richmond County Council has identified funding and will waive the tap fee and connection costs for the first 224 households that apply for connection to the Low Richmond sewer system prior to pre-construction bidding. While it is currently anticipated that 224 households for which funding has been identified may meet the demand, the Richland County Council further directs that staff keep council informed as to the number of pre-construction signups so that once the number reaches 175, council can direct staff to identify further funding avenues that are available to provide for the waiver of tap fee and connection costs to all households that seek to apply for connection to the Lower Richland sewer system prior to pre-construction bidding. With this motion, County Council reaffirms its commitment to provide four waiver of tap fees and connection costs for all households that seek to apply for connection to the Lower Richland sewer system prior to pre-construction bidding. Okay, that, that's second. the motion. It's been properly second. Um, any discussion? Mr. Malinowski. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Well, some of my colleagues apparently recall that number, 224 taps. Uh, I do not. I recall, as this council acted on this particular item, that the people that came before us were told that tap fees would be waived as long as they signed up prior to the beginning of construction. Now, I realize your last line in there to placate the people says if we go over 224, we'll find some other funding in there. But again, that is not my recollection of what took place to begin with. And I would like to see the minutes going back to where this was initially discussed that told us what we told the public not this particular number. As I said, some of my colleagues recall it apparently, I do not. And that's why I'd like to see the clarification. And I don't mean the clarification because a budget line item now says 224 taps It's so much. I mean the actual council minutes when this whole thing took place. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Malinowski. Next we have Ms. Dickerson. Uh, Mr. Chair, again, I'm gonna make a motion to defer this particular item 
because there still remains a lot of questions and until we can actually make sure that we have all our answers answered, the questions answered. And as I said, my esteemed colleague who is in that district is not here. So therefore, I'm going to make a motion to defer this item until further notice and we get more information. All right, I've got substitute motions for deferral. Uh, it's been properly second. Uh, deferral is non-debatable. All in favor of that motion, signify by raising your hand. The deferral. The deferral. In favor, Dixon, Malinowski, Rose, Dickerson. Any opposed? And Pierce, Rush, Livingston, Jeter. All right. So the deferral is not was defeated, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So we go back to the motion. Did we have five and five? Six. Was it five and five? We had five and five or six and five? It couldn't have been six. We had one abstain. Oh. You can't abstain. Okay. Our rules don't permit that. Yes, you can. It, it, huh? Can, can, par, uh, can you clarify with that? Written, with written notice. If, if one second, Ms. One second, Ms. Jackson. Sorry, let, let me get clarification from our... Uh, under the council rules, uh, there are various reasons for your abstaining from a vote, uh, but those have to do with potential conflicts which you would then let the clerk know that you're abstaining because you think you may have a conflict. If there is no vote by a council member at all, uh, then they are presumed to have voted on the prevailing side. Yeah, on the affirmative side, okay. Yeah, on the affirmative, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah no, that's basically the, the words that are used. Yeah. Okay. So. so what does the motion what? Sorry. According to the parliamentarians, re-understanding, then it's five and five. So the motion fails. So the motion fails for deferral. Okay. All right. Uh, now the, the initial motion uh, that was read by Mr. Malinowski is still on the table. I'm yeah. sorry. Mr. I'm sorry. Jackson. Mr. Jackson is still on the table. Yeah. Um, Mr. Jackson. Discussion? You want to vote on No, as a clarification, what that attorney says, um, okay. if you don't have a voice vote, right, it's in the affirmative. Okay. All right. All in favor of the motion that was read, signify by raising your hand. In favor, Pierce, Rush, Livingston. All against? Oppose, Dixon, Malinowski, Rose, Dickerson. Okay. What's? Four to three. Four, six, no, it Remember, if you didn't vote, it's in the affirmative. It's in the affirmative. Right. It's an affirmative vote. Okay, that motion carries. Six. Uh, Mr. 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 Chairman, may I have a point of personal privilege? Mr. Manning. Um, I'd like to recognize, and especially for people out there in Richland County, Transparency and Accountability TV. Do we have with us our county clerk of court and our county auditor present for our proceedings this evening? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right, thank you, Mr. Manning. Mr. Ma uh, McDonald, are you? Does that conclude your? That concludes the committee's report, Mr. Report. Mr. Chairman. Okay, report. All right. Next, we have citizens' input. Must pertain to items not on the agenda. We have two citizens signed up to speak. Uh, yeah. Can you? All right. Next, we uh, Miss Bradley, Helen Bradley. You have two minutes. If you can state your name and address for the record, please. Helen Bradley, 1916 Martin Luther King Boulevard, Hopkins, South Carolina. Um, I'm coming right now to say that I'd like to make a comment about the voice and hand voting. I think every member of council should vote a nay or recusal. That's just something that would, that's just common sense. If you have citizens representing you, you should at least think enough of them 
to vote one way or the other and let them have the right to see that. Also, on the agenda, when you look at items like the Project L&M, citizens like us, we don't know what that is. So is it that difficult that you can't spell out some of these items to let us know exactly what you're voting on? Um, when you're voting on these high dollar projects, I think we have a right to know what they are and where this money is going. Also, I think that as far as the meeting, the uh, committee meeting that was earlier this week, unless I was tone deaf, uh, uh, the responses about what DHEC said one of them was that they would stop issuing permits once the county put the line down. And the county would have the right to deny a permit and not have to give the citizens a reason why. Now, why that wasn't given to you all earlier, I don't know. But several things were said that DHEC said in that committee meeting it was not said in here tonight. And for a staff member, to get up and not say what was in a meeting when they knew citizens in the, in the, um, from the county was in that meeting. We, we don't just sit up in those meetings and go to sleep. We listen and we know what they said. And what they said in that meeting would give the county the right to condemn our people's property. And they know that is what was said. And if we're wrong, then they need to get somebody from DHEC to tell us what they said. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bradley. Tom Mackey. Tom Mankey, uh, Hopkins, South Carolina. Uh, this relates to uh, something that I brought up before. I come to you as a citizen before this council. We do not know one another. We don't know one another's motivations. And so to try to help me understand how you respond to me, if I've been heard or not, as I present a question or a statement, I would like one of my council members, maybe my district or one of you, to make a motion on my behalf to amend that section of the rules of order that disallows council members to respond to a citizen coming before you as I am now. The reason I realize time is very important, but I think, and I heard in the prayer tonight, we're after understanding here, we're after wisdom. This understanding thing is very important, and I request that you respond, even in the form of a succinct restatement of what was asked or stated by the citizen, out of politeness, so that I know that I've been heard, but even most importantly, uh, so that I know that I have been understood. If you restate to me what I said to you, I can clarify if there's been a misunderstanding. And I would also like to make a request that the button that starts the two-minute time be right here so that after I give my name and address, I can push that button and start it. And that way, I can, and maybe it would be neat to know, have a little marker telling me when my two minutes is going to be up just so I can judge that I say what is most important in my statement and maybe not be as full and rich in the presentation of it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Mackey. All right, next item we have items for executive session. Uh, one second, could you uh, state the items? Mr. For Chairman, the and members of council, um, we have one item that remains for executive session. That's item 2A, art sanitation transfer. That's a contractual matter. Can you talk into the mic? I'm sorry. Thank you. We have one item remaining for executive session. That's item 2A. Our sanitation transfer that is a contractual matter. All right. All right. That's the item we have for executive session. The chair entertain a motion. Move. Got a motion. It's been properly second. Can I get a second? Second. All right. It's been properly second. All in favor of that motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? Executive session.